So the big news right now is confirmation that Black Ops 4 will in fact be ditching the single player campaign in favor of a more class focused multiplayer mode, zombie mode and battle royale. And as expected, this announcement has proven to be quite divisive among fans of the series. On one end of the spectrum, those who mainly enjoyed Call of Duty single player campaigns are understandably disappointed, angry even. And the big question on their minds is why even go with a Black Ops sequel instead of calling it something else if they weren't going to pursue a narrative driven campaign, which I think is a fair question. On the other end of the spectrum, those who mainly enjoyed Call of Duty's multiplayer may tell you that for them the single player campaign is an acceptable loss and that they're excited about the return of boots on the ground, the deeper focus on specialists that were first introduced in Black Ops 3, the expansion of zombies mode, and the addition of Treyarch's potentially interesting take on Battle Royale. In that spectrum there are those who might say that the campaign was going downhill anyway so it was best for them to go, or that they don't like how the game is leaning away from its core identity and more towards the popular, monetizable trends like Battle Royale. Regardless of what your stance may be, there is certainly no denying that Treyarch's decision to forego the campaign and lean towards pre-established popular trends has caused a rift to form in the community, so it should come as no surprise that these were topics that came up often during recent interviews with the studio. One interview I'd like to talk about is this one right here by website Eurogamer, who wasted no time in discussing the controversial decision to ditch single player with Treyarch Studio head Dan Bunting. Now, right off the bat, he says something that doesn't match up with information we know. The first question Eurogamer asked reads, quote, I understand there was a campaign you worked on that was scrapped. What challenges did you face in the development of it, and what ultimately led to the decision to ditch it? So in case you aren't aware, almost everything about Black Ops 4 was leaked like a month prior to the event by numerous websites. This article by Polygon talked about how according to their sources, Black Ops 4 would not feature a traditional single player campaign, and that it would focus on expanding zombie mode, as well as placing an emphasis on more cooperative forms of multiplayer as a stand-in. And various other websites not only corroborated Polygon's information, but also reported the existence of a battle royale royale mode, all of which we know now to be dead on the money. But the important bit about the single player campaign is that it was actually in development at one point, but as Black Ops 4's release date approached, it became evident that it would not be completed on time so they scrapped it altogether to focus strictly on multiplayer, which is their money maker. Website Eurogamer then added further to this by citing how according to their sources, the campaign was scrapped sometime in early 2018, by which point the game was well into its development cycle. Which is why Eurogamer kicks off their first question in the interview with the statement, I understand there was a campaign you worked on that was scrapped. However, the response that Dan Bunting provided was not what was expected given the leaks. He said, quote, Going back to the very beginning of Black Ops 4's development, we never had set out to make a traditional campaign. We always started from the place of, we're going to make something different with this game that was going to be inspired by how our community was interacting with Black Ops 3 and the games over the years. Yeah, I'm gonna call bullshit on that. In fact, this right here is such a bold-faced lie that the interviewer had to ask him a second time to be sure, to which Dan Bunting once again reiterated that there was never a traditional campaign. Look, on some level, I understand the financial appeal of forgoing a single player campaign on Call of Duty games. I'm not saying I agree with it, that I accept it, or that I don't think it's a bummer. I'm saying I get some of the thought process behind it, and I understand there are some arguments that can be made for the decision. But what I can't get behind is the yarn of corporate bullshit they're spinning around all this. We know almost certainly that a single player campaign was in development before it was scrapped earlier this year. This is something that's been corroborated by multiple sources whose leaks have proven to be spot on. In turn, one could argue that had Activision given Black Ops 4 more development time and delayed it a couple months, then the game could have featured a single player campaign and given us a full package, but naturally, a delay was something that Activision wouldn't allow as they have to strictly release their games in accordance with investors' quarterly schedules and whatnot. 
That's not the prettiest of narratives though, so of course they'll try to put a positive spin on all this. Which is why we're hearing Treyarch state that a traditional campaign was never planned in the first place, that they wanted to challenge convention, and that they wanted to tell stories differently, referring to how the narrative is now woven into the game's multiplayer modes. That's one thing I can't stomach about all this. They're trying to sell us on the notion that cutting features is somehow transformative, that it's change, when in reality, it's just the cut feature. They can't be honest about the fact that they weren't given enough time to finish the campaign they initially had set out to make. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. Oh well, very few people play Call of Duty single player campaigns anyway, so who cares? This is the thought process that's currently permeating, especially after Dan Bunting provided the following justification in defense of cutting a traditional single-player campaign in another interview with website Polygon. When I first started on multiplayer in the Call of Duty franchise, 10% of our population was playing competitive multiplayer. Fast forward to 2015 or 2016, you're looking at 90% of our players are playing multiplayer. If you look at it through that lens and trying to deliver more for your players and how you're playing the game, it's a pretty easy decision. I realize it's also a challenging decision for other reasons, but we have never been ones to shy away from a challenge. So the assumption is that barely anybody plays Call of Duty single-player campaigns nowadays, or that the number of players who do has declined significantly over the years. But I'm going to prove that this is actually complete horseshit. I would like to direct your attention to website psnprofiles.com, which keeps track of the percentage of players who earned PlayStation trophies, giving us a good idea of how many people started playing single player or multiplayer and stuck with them over a long period of time. While I wouldn't say that this is hard data that paints a complete picture, as figures may vary based on different games and platforms, there is enough here to disprove the notion that there is no longer an audience left for Call of Duty single player campaigns. The game that I'll be using as an example is the last Call of Duty entry, World War II, which was hugely successful, selling a whopping 20.7 million copies as of January 2018. Now, what's great about this website is that it not only shows you the rarity of these trophies based on the people registered here, it also shows you the PSN rarity that you'd find if you checked out achievement stats on your PlayStation 4, and that's the information that I'll be using. I'd like to begin by showing you the stats for a trophy called Long Way from Texas, which is earned by completing the first mission in the game, D-Day, a good way to gauge how many people at least started playing the campaign. According to the stats shown, 50. 7% of PlayStation 4 players played enough of the campaign to finish the first mission. From there, when we look at the trophy to the end, which you earn by completing the campaign, that number does drop substantially to 24.7% but that is still a lot of people who engage with a single-player campaign. Of its 20 million copies, Call of Duty World War II sold 12.1 million on PS4, and 24.7% of that is still close to 3 million players, which is a lot. Perhaps more enlightening are stats for how many people engage in multiplayer. According to these stats, of the PS4 players who played World War II, only 64.7% played enough multiplayer to get 10 kills, which is not that much higher than the 50.7% who played enough single player to beat the campaign's first mission. Then, if we look at how many played multiplayer long enough to achieve Soldier Prestige 1, which I think aptly represents the more dedicated segment of the Call of Duty community, the number dips to 21%, lower than the 24.7% who finished the single-player campaign all the way through. Steam's global achievement stats are also quite illuminating, showing that 71.6% of PC players beat the campaign's first mission, and 38.2% finished it entirely, while 66.1% of players got 10 kills on multiplayer, and only 15.4% were dedicated enough to achieve Soldier Prestige one. Now, I did try to look up stats for Xbox One, but I found that they were inconsistent across different websites, as those percentages were calculated based on their registered users, so I'd prefer not to rely too heavily on those. 
But the data we got from PS4 and Steam trophies and achievements should be enough to show that the gap between the number of players who play and finish campaigns versus those who play multiplayer extensively isn't as wide as you might think. As a matter of fact, data from PSN Trophy suggests that more people finish a Call of Duty single player campaign than they achieve prestige in multiplayer PvP. And on Steam, more people started and finished the single player campaign than they played multiplayer. If we take into account that Call of Duty World War II sold 20 million copies, using the PSN Trophy stats as an average, that is 24.7% of 20 million, which is almost 5 million players who were invested enough in the single player campaign to finish it. Now, it is important to consider that once players finish a campaign, they will just stop playing it, whereas those who are dedicated enough to achieve prestige and high ranks in multiplayer will likely keep playing the game for a long time to come and invest in things like microtransactions. Despite the fact that there's really not much difference between how many people finish single player games versus how many are dedicated in multiplayer, because multiplayer is so replayable, it makes the game mode infinitely more monetizable, which is the appeal that draws greedy game publishers to multiplayer or live services. But to distract distract attention away from all that, the narrative that's being put forth right now is one that inaccurately represents why Black Ops 4's campaign was actually cut. The claim is that Black Ops 4's campaign was cut because this was planned from the outset to try to tell stories differently, to change things up, and to challenge conventions, when in reality it was scrapped well into the game's development due to time constraints. The claim is that few people care, look forward to, or play Call of Duty single player campaigns anymore, when in reality millions of players still go out of their way to finish them. You can even see across the series history based on data compiled by website True Achievements, which tracks Xbox trophies for the website's registered users, that say for one or two anomalies, the number of people who finished each Call of Duty's respective campaigns, especially the good ones, has held relatively steady. While these percentages may be lower than some might expect or desire, they are far from insignificant, still representing millions of players. And it's important to note that in the same manner that some peter out of finishing the single player campaign, there are those who will peter out of playing multiplayer before they get far as well. Say what you want about Black Ops 4's direction, whether you're upset that the single player campaign was cut, or whether you don't mind the heavy emphasis on multiplayer and the introduction of Call of Duty's take on Battle Royale, but we all know that the way Activision and Treyarch are trying to spin all this is horseshit. The way they're downplaying the significant amount of interest in Call of Duty single player campaigns, particularly for the Black Ops saga. The way the exclusion of a campaign is being masqueraded as bold innovation, it's all horseshit. If they're going to ditch a feature that so many Call of Duty fans have enjoyed throughout the long history of the series and still enjoy, the least they could do is be straight with us. The truth is simple, really. The campaign had to go because it couldn't be finished on time, and it was replaced with Battle Royale because it's the new popular trend, because it was way easier and cheaper to develop, and because it is way more monetizable. Whatever your thoughts may be on Black Ops 4's approach, let's at least make one thing clear. Cutting the single player campaign had nothing to do with a lack of interest from gamers or with the developers wanting to try something different, as they'd have you believe. With that, I would like to end this news update. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. It is completely optional, but donating even as little as a dollar a month will go a long way in helping this channel grow. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.